Hello everyone, this is Leo from the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be taking a look at Verlocker, a ransomware which has been going quite viral lately. And that is not a pun. There are several things that make this ransomware quite special, and we'll go through them one by one. I will start with the fact that it is not exactly a traditional ransomware in the sense that it only encrypts your files. It is also partly a virus. That means every time it is executed on a system, it is going to self-replicate and replace your files with different versions of itself. And that brings us to the second nature of the file in that it is polymorphic, meaning that it can change some parts of itself in order to evade detection. And both of these aspects make this file really annoying. Verlocker isn't exactly a new threat. It has been around for quite some time, but it's catching on again now, and both Malwarebytes and Bleeping Computer have posted about it recently, so I thought it might be a good time to visit this threat since we have never looked at it on TPSC. Some of you may also know this as the FBI ransomware because of its uh, infamous splash screen. So without further ado, I will show you guys what this file does. It can be of any given size, because as I said, this is kind of a patching program, so you'll find all kinds of file sizes associated with this threat. On execution, you're going to notice a huge spike in CPU activity. Our CPU is almost maxed out, and you'll see a plethora of new processes. Disk activity is also going to soar, as expected. If we take a look at our files in the meantime, they have already been modified, and what's going to happen is every single file is now going to open the ransomware if you try to access them. So if you are a victim of this threat, extreme caution is required while dealing with your affected files because you could unknowingly spread this ransomware not just to others, but other devices of yours and to different systems. It can spread like wildfire in no time. That is one of the unique aspects of this threat that makes it so deadly. It does take some time before the ransom message actually pops up. Malwarebytes made a very detailed article describing the infection mechanism and the polymorphic functionality. It seems like it is using different XOR and roll seeds to make the encrypted content of each file appear entirely different. An XOR function can be used for cryptography. It's not essentially very powerful in itself, um, but it can quickly scramble up the contents of files. If you are into computer science, you probably know very well what XOR is. It's just a logic gate, and it can be implemented in code quite easily. Now, roll just rolls the bits uh, in a particular fashion up to like n bits. So when these functions are used in combination, reading the contents of the file can be very difficult. And it can be difficult to recognize the file instantly based on some kind of algorithm. This is the structure of every Verlocker infected file. So it has a payload stub and then the polymorphic encrypted code and the unique encrypted original file. And then there are some resources. So as you can see, there's a layer of polymorphic encrypted code, which is going to prevent you from accessing the encrypted file. But there is always this payload stub and executable attached to it. So that is how the files actually unlock, as we'll see later on when you do supply the appropriate key. Now coming back to our virtual machine, as you can see we have a message on our screen and we don't have anything else so our computer is completely locked down. According to the ransomware um, it is because we have committed the atrocious act of piracy and it even has an FBI anti-piracy warning, Department of Justice logo, tries to look all legit. I really wish the US government officials found out these guys. <laughs> then they'd be getting an actual taste of the legal process. But well, until that happens, we'll have to just look at this message. So according to this message, willful copyright infringement is a federal crime that carries penalties up to five years in federal prison, a $250,000 fine, forfeiture, and restitution. So 
I'm not sure if that's actually accurate. Somebody who is more experienced in US law can probably tell us in the comments. But here's the funny part. This is how the ransomware lures you into thinking that the payment option is actually something you should immediately opt for. It says, as a first-time offender, you are required by law to pay a fine of 250 USD. That sounds really cheap compared to the 250 grand that you could be made to pay. So it seems like the FBI is going easy on you. Thank goodness they didn't think I was a regular offender. The amount in Bitcoin is 0 0.269 and uh, it asks you for this transfer ID. And this text box is actually the key here because as intimidating as it looks, this is actually one of the easiest ransomware to crack open. So I'm not sure if this is by design, if this was supposed to be a secret and the security researchers at Malwarebytes figure it out or if this is a vulnerability in the ransomware itself that they didn't fix. Whatever it is, if you enter 64 zeros over here and click on pay fine, it will actually unlock your files. That's all you have to do. I'm not kidding, this is real. Unfortunately, it doesn't allow you to copy and paste any code. So um, I'm going to have to type in zero 64 times 61 62 63 and 64 phew now we can pay our fine i guess that's better than spending 250 dollars i'm not so sure now though and as you can see it immediately quits and brings us back to windows explorer and if you go under pictures and take a look, your files still look the same, but when you try to open them, it is actually going to run some kind of patching program because remember, these uh, files in themselves actually do contain the executable code of the ransomware. So it is going to run and then it's going to modify itself, remove the ransomware code and restore your file. So, wow. And you can do this for any file, as you can see. It just takes a while because the patching code does have to execute, but then you have your files back. So this is how you can get rid of this ransomware for absolutely no cost, no additional software required. You can do all of this yourself. And um, that's probably the Achilles heel of this ransomware. They have got so many annoying things, but this Herculean flaw lets pretty much anyone circumvent the splash screen, even if you have no technical knowledge or anything. So please share this video. We don't want anyone paying $250 for no reason. I mean, I'm sure you can type 64 zeros. It's not that hard, trust me. It, make your kid do it. It's nice mental exercise for someone who's learning how to count. Sadly, it might be nice mental exercise for some adults I know as well. But anyway, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. By the way, you're looking at me through the Logitech C920 now. It's uh, pretty much top tier when it comes to webcams, and I'm not getting a DSLR for this, so um, I hope you like the quality in terms of the frame rate and everything. It should be good. This is 1080p as well, so maybe I can make some um, you know, full screen videos and discussions and things like that if you guys don't hate that kind of thing. Once again, thank you for watching. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.